Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of STEM Learn. I am by myself today, which is very sad. Mrs. Fugel is busy. Hashtag that mum life. Hopefully we'll get her back soon. Anyway, today we're going to have a look at something that's very popular in the STEM world, which is making robots. Most people are making robots that they can control remotely. But today I'm going to show you how to make an obstacle avoidance robot using an obstacle avoidance sensor. So this particular obstacle avoidance sensor is an infrared one. So what it does is it sends out an infrared signal using this little device and then it receives it through this one. So as this is emitting an infrared signal, if an obstacle comes in the way, it the signal will bounce back and be received by this guy. So it knows there's something in the way. And it's really easy to wire up. It's got four little output wires there. Um, it's also labeled them. So you can see it's got ground on the bottom one and then it's got a little plus sign on the one above ground and then it's got a little out on the one above that. So that's our output signal. So it's really easy to wire up. So I'm going to do that. So we've got our black wire for ground. We'll just slip that on there. There's ground. Next one is the positive. So we'll just get a red one and just slip that on there. Easy. And the next one is the output signal. So we'll just get a yellow one and stick that on there. You don't need anything on the top one. I don't really know what that's for. But I'm going to screw this onto a servo so that as my robot wants to move around the maze or wherever it's moving around, it can sit on here and the servo can act like a looking device. So when it detects a obstacle, the server will move around and see where there is no obstacle so it can then move forward. So I've screwed the obstacle avoidance sensor onto my servo and we've got a great video on how to connect a servo to the Arduino which you can go check out. So I'm just going to put it all together with our Arduino and code it up so you can use it in your robots. So I think by now it should be really obvious how to connect this up. I've put the two signal wires, the one from the obstacle avoidance sensor and the servo into pins seven and eight on this side. So eight is for the servo and seven is for the sensor. And then I've put the servo into the five volts and the sensor into the 3.3 volts. They're both going to work on either of them, but um, I just found when you put the sensor into the 5 volt that it senses a bit too much. <laughs> so it just works a little better on the 3.3, and obviously the two grounds are there. So you don't even need a breadboard for this one. You can connect it all directly on whatever robot design you have. And now all we're going to do is write the code so that we can get this thing working and you can see how easy it is. With the code, I've actually written it up already just to save us a bit of time, but I am going to take you through it. So because we're using a servo and we've got a video all about this so you can go have a look. Basically, you always have to include the servo library. I've put my sensor pin on 7 and I put the servo pin on 8, so I've just stated that there. I've just introduced another random integer called value because we're going to check that. So uh, later when we look at the sensor, whether it's receiving a signal or not, that's the value there. I've called my servo movebot. It's because Mrs. Fugel's not here to give it a cool name. It's lame, I know. Anyway, so we just set up, so the sensor pin of course is an input signal, so it's going to input to the Arduino whether it's sensing something or not. I've attached obviously my servo to pin 8. And what I've done here is set the servo to the 90 degree position, because what I want it to do is to stay at 90 to check from 
180 to zero and back to see where there are obstacles so it knows where ne to go next. Um, this is all for you guys to figure out when you're making your robots, but it just gives you the basics of what you can do with the servo and the sensor. So in the loop, what we're going to constantly do is check the reading from the sensor and we're going to store that in our variable that we created, that value variable, it gets stored and then it's going to check if the value is low, which actually means it's detecting a signal then you'll actually notice an LED flash on the sensor and then what it's going to do is do what I described before it's going the servo is going to go to 180 check what's happening over there go to 0 check what's happening over there and come back to 90 at the moment it's not checking anything I'm just showing you the movements that it'll make if there's an obstacle detected so that's the idea with the code so what we'll do is we'll just upload it I've just uploaded the sketch. You can see here it's not detecting any obstacles. Let's make the obstacle my screwdriver. What you'll notice is the light turns on to show that there was an obstacle again. And it's going to keep turning until that obstacle goes away. But what I also want you to notice is when it turns to the right, that light goes off to show that there's no obstacle to the right. So then what I would suggest that you do when creating your robot is when it suddenly the value goes off like that, it actually turns that way and starts moving. Because I've got it in the 3.3 volts, it actually has to get pretty close to detect an obstacle. But if you use the breadboard, you can put it in the 5 volts and it actually can go up to about 10 centimeters, I think, or 5 centimeters. Uh, so it's a pretty good little sensor. And um, yeah. You can have a lot of fun with it. It's detecting the camera. Oh. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video about the obstacle avoidance sensor. If you liked our video and you'd like to watch more, please subscribe to our channel and you can also watch that servo video here.